Elephant and the Assembly of Animals The wise elephant, whose efforts were always directed towards the benefit of his society, saw with much concern the many abuses among the beasts, which called loudly for reform. He therefore assembled them, and, with all due respect and humility, began a long sermon, wherein he spoke plainly to them about their vices and bad habits. He called their attention especially to their idle ways, their greed, cruelty, envy, hatred, treachery, and deceit. To many of his auditors this speech was excellent, and they listened with open-mouthed attention, especially such as the innocent dove, the faithful dog, the obedient camel, the harmless sheep, and the industrious ant. The busy bee also approved much of this lecture. Another part of the audience were extremely offended, and could scarcely endure so long an oration. The tiger, for instance, and the wolf were exceedingly tired, and the serpent hissed with all his might, while a murmur of disapprobation burst from the wasp, the drone, the hornet, and the fly. The grasshopper hopped disdainfully away from the assembly. The sloth was indignant. The insolent ape mimicked the orator. The elephant, seeing the tumult, concluded his discourse with these words. My advice is addressed equally to all, but remember that those who feel hurt by any remarks of mine acknowledge their guilt. The innocent are unmoved. It is the bit dog that howls. The Hungry Cat and the Pigeons A certain man brought up a cat, which he fed but sparingly, and the poor animal, being very ravenous and not contented with her ordinary food, was wont to hunt about in every corner for more. One day, passing by a dovecote, she saw some young pigeons that were scarcely fledged, and her mouth watered for a taste of them. To gratify her taste at once, she climbed up into the dovecote, never caring to find out whether the master was in the way or not. But no sooner did the owner of the bird see the cat enter than he shut the doors and stopped up all the holes where she might get out again, and having caught the thieving puss red-handed, he hanged her up in the corner of the pigeon-house. Soon after the cat's master passed that way, and seeing his cat exclaimed, Unfortunate creature, hadst thou been contented with thy meaner food, thou hadst not now been in this condition. The insatiable are the procurers of their own untimely ends. The Parrot A certain widower, in order to amuse his solitary hours, and in some measure supply the conversation of his departed helpmate of loquacious memory, determined to purchase a parrot. With this view, he applied to a dealer in birds, who showed him a large collection of parrots of various kinds. While they were exercising their talkative talents before him, one repeating the cries of the town, another asking for a cup of sack, and a third bawling out for a coach. He observed a green parrot, perched in a thoughtful manner at a distance upon the foot of a table. "'And so you, my grave gentleman,' said he, "'are quite silent.' To which the parrot replied, like a philosophical bird, "'I think the more.' Pleased with this sensible answer, our widower immediately paid down his price, and took home the bird conceiving great things from a creature who had given so striking a specimen of his parts. But after having instructed him during a whole month, he found to his great disappointment that he could get nothing more from him than the fatiguing repetition of the same dull sentence, I think the more. I find, said he in great wrath, that thou art a most invincible fool, and ten times more a fool was I for having formed a favorable opinion of thy abilities upon no better foundation than an affected solemnity. Gravity, though sometimes the main of wisdom, is often found 
to be the mask of ignorance.